Sound good? Let's go. Amazing. Amazing. So my name is Ian Davies. I am the Regional Development Director for Keller Williams Canada. Uh, what that means is, is I help new brokerages open all across the country. I'm responsible coast to coast. Uh, we have about 5,000 agents total in Canada. We have about 10,000 agents over the next couple of years. Cool? I'm also a practicing real estate agent in Hamilton. I, had, I, yeah, I was the number one single agent for them for several years before I took on the role of the region. Um, in my last full year of trading, I did just over half a million dollars of GCI, and I did that in just under 700 hours in the year. To give you an idea, full-time job is 2,000 working hours, and I did it in 700. Okay? That's cool. And so what I'm going to be sharing with you today is a lot of my experience in how I created that business. It's specifically a seller heavy business. Okay? Why do we want sellers? Just we've got to throw this out there. Why are we looking for listings? Because you get buyers. Well, yeah, and you, they, give, you can get buyers. Market, mm -hmm. They sell quicker, you're not running yeah. around too much, you have more control. Absolutely. Promoting yourself while you are working for your seller clients, but for buyer, just working, not promoting yourself. Okay. Yeah. What else? There's more leads, I think. And you can get leads, leads. off the off, off, off listing. Out. What else? More business. Let me ask you a question. How much time do you think it takes to sell a buyer? Actual time of your work? Okay. More time with buyer. Forever? Okay. Well, who else? The average is about 40 hours. What if, it, if they're ready to buy? They're ready. It's going to be a few days. If they days. don't know what they are buying, could be a few months. So, on the whole, yeah. 40 hours is a, is a time in is what it takes to sell a buyer. Yeah. 40. Oh, yeah. They know what they're doing. Yeah. And even if they know what they're doing, like I've had seller, I've had buying clients write six and seven offers on different properties mm -hmm. that we've seen a whole bunch of different properties. We're writing an offer every weekend, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. It takes time, right? How much actual time does it take to sell a listing? In a good market, it should Any be... Any market. Actual time. Not you waiting oh. when you're sitting watching Netflix and the house is for sale. Oh. How much actual work is there? Work is a few hours. Yeah, it's actually four on average. Four, four okay. hours. Four oh. hours. On average, just okay. of your actual own personal work. Well, it may take a month, but the time you put is not much. Yeah, the time you put is not much. So how many listings could you, at four hours, how many listings could you actually carry? 20. 50? 50. Wow. Our top single agent, Keller Williams Canada, is in New Brunswick. She sold 211 homes on her own, alone. That's more than almost every single agent in Toronto so long ago. Hmm. And why could she do that? She could do that because she was listing heavy. She was almost entirely on the listing side because she could carry 50 listings at any given time. Right? You can't carry 50 buyers. How are you going to see properties for 50 buyers? If you did 50 buyers in a year, you'd quit. You'd make a million dollars and quit. <laughs> right? Exhausted. 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 So the reason you want to be a listing agent is you want to be a listing agent because it's easier on your time. So you can keep doing buyers and still have listings. I you thought can, it was the other way around. No, it is. Bad. I promise you it is not. <laughs> buyers are time invested. Listings are money invested. Right. Okay? Listings are more expensive to take. But they are way more time efficient. So, why are you here? It, it, was what, it was the reason why we don't have listings. Because <laughs> you don't have listings? All right, that's no problem. So, I have a rule anytime we, quit, we quote Gary Keller, let's put our fingers like this under your nose. You ever know, ever know who, Gary, who Gary Keller is? Because everyone makes fun of his mouth. Um, yeah. When you interview top people and ask them what their biggest challenge is, invariably they will say it is mindset. Keeping it strong, focused, positive amid the many challenges they, they encounter every day on their way to the top and staying there in the vast, the vast majority say this is their top issue, not leads, but mindset. Okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about mindset going forward. 
Success begins with proven models. What does this mean? Well, let me ask you something. If you wanted to open a restaurant tomorrow, would you just go out and open any restaurant? No. Or would you go out and open a McDonald's because the system is proven you know exactly where to get all the things, who to hire, they're going to, cheat, cheat, they're going to plan everything for you. You just have to do it. Right? That's this. Stable model. And the creativity comes after. Right? Whereas if you base your, your, your business on the creativity first and you don't really have the foundation of a model, that's when you start getting a little bit lopsided. So, the seven step seller service cycle is the model that we're going to be talking about. And so we start right here, lead conversion, pre-listing, listing consultation, servicing and marketing, offers and negotiation, contract to close, and then the post-closing systems. And the post-closing systems will end up equaling more leads, which then you then convert into pre-listing packages and so on. Can you go closer and take the picture? You can download everything I'm showing you here today okay. off of KWU. Okay. Okay. Great. Full disclosure, this is typically a full day course. Okay. Okay. And we're condensing it down into this time. But if this was in the full day course, you're going to see it come up. We'd be making calls. We'd be calling our leads. We'd be converting people. We'd be doing everything in the course. But because I only have about an hour and a half. I am going to race through the exercises and not do the calls in an attempt to get it all in for you guys. Thank you. Cool? Mindset and actions. Mindset, change your actions, and getting the most out of this experience. Chapter one, lead conversion. All right, converting leads to appointments. How many of you, where are you getting your leads from currently? Friends and referrals. Anyone else? It's okay if in your head you're saying, I'm not getting leads. I'm not getting leads. Okay. Awesome. How? How do you go out and look for leads? Well, there's a door knocking. Door knocking? Yeah. Do you door knock? Yes. Not, I, I haven't done that very often, but for me, <laughs> while I'm walking down the street, I'll just stop someone. <laughs> That's what I've been doing a lot. Hi, my name is You head up. up you knock on people's heads. <laughs> 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 I've been seeing myself doing that, especially with the Thank you. Okay, so let's do a list here. Door knock. Social media marketing? Social. What else? And calling database and calling your network. We're going to call that COI or center of influence. What else? Well, cold calling, I don't do that, but you know. Colds? What else? Uh, some successful agent, they do the client events. Events, yeah. So they do many things. <laughs> There's nothing up on here yet that you can't do, mm -hmm. even if you're brand new. Anyone else? Is social part of like Facebook advertising? Yeah. Social media. Um, flyers, postcards. Okay. So print advertising? Print advertising. Mm -hmm. What else we got? Newsletters. Newsletters? Oh, yeah. Uh, Google ad and YouTube ads, which is a bit expensive. Yeah, ads. Oh, so sure. Social yeah. ads. Anyone else? Oh, there are flyers. You know, that's part of door knocking, I guess. Print ads, yeah. Yeah, all print ads, yeah. Jogging. Jogging? Yeah. 
I did jogging yesterday. I spoke to many neighbors. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like actual jogging? I did actually <laughs> jogging. Okay. Uh, I'm going to call that stories of influence. <laughs> okay. Well, they didn't know me. Well, that's pretty well, they didn't know like you? What? Cold jogging. That's cold. pretty much like I was saying. Yeah, cold, I'm cold, cold jogging. Cold jogging. Cold jogging. jogging. So, okay. Cold jogging. I'm going to throw, <laughs> throw one more up here. Open houses. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Lotus hanging fruits. There is a gazillion other ways you can generate business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? There I, I, I bus benches. There are there's a million things that you can do. Here's the here's the truth. Okay? How many people in here have been in the business for under two years? Under two years. Okay? So you're relatively new. Two to five? Two to five? Five plus years? Awesome. All right. So, and are your businesses where you want them to be or you need more leads? We need more leads. Okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to ignore this. You're going to ignore this. This, you can do four times a year. Partner with another agent. Partner with five other agents if you want to do an event. I used to show a movie at Christmas every year. I'd rent out a Cineplex theater, and we'd show a movie. I just partnered with a couple agents. We paid for it. It cost like 2300 bucks. split four ways. Fill the theater. Awesome. What if you are from another city, and you are here with no past clients? You cannot uh, do many of those, but I don't know about the events. You can do the events. So yeah, you can, you can do whatever you, you yeah. feel comfortable with. And if you're from a different city, that's fine. You're going to be more in the cool. Do not do cool calls. No. Do not do cold calls. Not anymore. Yeah. It's it's not well received. It's yeah. not a good return on your time. Yeah. Here's what you can do. Door knocking, absolutely do it. Okay. Be kind, be courteous. Don't sell like don't sell to people like you're selling hot water heaters. Okay? And come with information that they can use. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, my name is Ian Davies from Keller Williams Complete Realty. I was just canvassing the neighborhood because a property down the street just sold. It looked kind of like yours. Three bedrooms, two and a half baths. It sold for $1.1 million. We know when one sells in a neighborhood, a couple more are going to sell right after. Do you know, or, do you know anyone that's thinking in the street right now selling? That's it. That's all I got to do. Are you curious at all what your home's worth? The answer is no. Get going. Next, next steps. Okay. Personal social media, you can do that. And then this is where, that's the one where you're going to get all your deals from. Really? 100%. Here's why. How many people do you think you know? The average person don't know is 200. So what's 200 times 200? 40,000. So, within one degree of separation, you know 40,000 people the size of a small city. Okay? If you work those 200 people, they're going to know people that want to move. Simple. It's, it's just math. You have these conversations, and these conversations sound like personal conversations with a sprinkling of, hey, if you're going to know what your home is worth, I'll send you a CMA. And, and you can know, even if you're not thinking of selling, it's all right. So they need to think you need a real tour. Is that fair? Ba, ba, ba. And so, leads a conversion. Uh, lead conversion begins with leads. So the person that you're looking for has to be able, willing, and ready. Okay. If they're not one of these things, what are they? Not, not, a not a lead. <laughs> right? And so you're going to have a lot of people, and I'll give you an example. My wife is on every realtor list in Hamilton. Oh, really? We are looking for a property in three years mm -hmm. to move to a push house down and build a new one. Three years from now. I haven't got the money to do what we want to do right now, so even if she finds it, she can't buy it. Not able. Mm -hmm. She's ready to go. She's willing to go, but she ain't able, right? 
There's lots of people with the ability that they're ready, but they're unwilling to make the move because they're scared. Think retirees. I'm in my home. The home's getting too much. I could go to a, I could go to an out living facility. I'm able. I'm ready. I need to leave, but I'm just not willing to leave my home. And then there's the people that are willing and able, but they're not ready. Part of the reason that we're not moving is because I back onto my kid's school, and my kids have another three years at that school before they move on to high school. Then I will be ready. Right? Oh dear. <laughs> what happened? Oh, there you go. oh! So, the lead conversion model. Okay? You capture lead. Capturing is any one of these. When you get a name, a phone number, an email address, and a physical address. Okay? And they go into this bucket, and you connect with them. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Potential Seller. You know, I got, I got your lead. I want to talk to you about your home. That's fine. They're going to fit into two categories when you have that conversation. They're either going to go into uh, close to an appointment. I'd like to come over and see what, see what your home is worth so we can get the house listed. Right? Or, I'm not willing, or I'm not able, or I'm not ready, and then they want to cultivate. <laughs> right? When you follow up with that person. Let me tell you where... Every single agent who's ever failed at this falls down. There. Right? It's there. They say something like, they didn't move to here, therefore they're wasting my time. Ha! Mm -hmm. They th say things like, oh, that person was a tire kicker. Ha! And what they really should be is here. Okay? And you're providing value for them on an ongoing basis. Successful lead conversion outcomes. Business building conversations aim to achieve these goals. Get an appointment or get a referral. And they, and they must always accomplish the following. Strengthen a relationship. Right? Once you've done this long enough, you're going to have people that have never bought from you, never sold with you, refer their friends. Right? So capture. Seller opportunities. Capture techniques. We went over that. Connect with connecting with behavioral styles. So we don't have enough time to go into this day. It's actually it's a whole long course. Who knows what a disc profile is? The disc profile. Uh, there's the right. personality. It's a personality test, right? <coughs> but it's also a great shorthand for salespeople on how you're going to talk to somebody. So, for, as an example, DISC stands for D-I-C. -S. Direct, interpersonal, um, compliance, security. Direct, get to the point, I want to be in charge. Interpersonal, I care about how things feel and how people see me and how I make people feel when I'm around. Compliance, accountants, people that are num numbers oriented, facts oriented, very little emotion in a decision. Okay? They also want to follow the rules, hardcore follow the rules. Security, I want to be safe. I don't want to get inside my comfort zone. I want to feel the warm and fuzzy. Okay? As you learn more about these, that's the short version of this, as you learn more about these and how to tell who's who, you'll know how to talk to those people in a manner in which they can communicate with you. Okay? Teresa, hi. The MCA is a, right? Philip. Close to appointment. Use the lead sheet, which is available on KWU. 
you, you fill it out. A lot of people don't use lead sheets anymore. They really ought to. They're in, the, in the manual for this course, there's scripts with 10 closes, closings for appointments, things like that. There's great ones. The one that I use most often is this. Great. So you'd like to know what the private value of your home is because you'd like to move to X place. And the reason you want to move there is because you want to do this. Yes? This is important. Okay? Listen to me. Great. Here's what happens next. I need to come over to your house so we can do an assessment and figure out what your home's going to sell for so that we can begin the process. Is Tuesday at 5 okay or would you like Wednesday at 6? Great. Here's what happens next. It is the greatest transition in sales history. Okay? And so when, you're, when you say that, then you close for an appointment and you give them the options to come over. Give a person two options, let them choose. Okay? Don't say what time is good for you. Here's why. You're busy and they're invariably going to say a time when your kid's baseball game is and you're either going to have to be a shit parent and miss the baseball game or a shit realtor and miss the appointment. So give them times that are in your schedule. Right? Far too many real estate agents say, hey, what time's good for you? And they're like, hey, tomorrow at 7? And they're like, no problem, I'll blow off my anniversary. <laughs> it happens all the time. All the time. Give them times that work for you. Okay? Answering questions and objection handling. For an appointment, if you've done your job, if you've done the thing, you said, you're great, here's what happens next. All the objections they're going to give you are going to be objections that ought to be handled at the appointment. But what are you going to list my house for? That's a great question. Once I've gone through the house, I'll give you the recommendation. What's good, what are you going to charge? That's a great question. I'm sure it's important to you. It would be one of the first things we talk about once I'm there. Right? Don't be like, well, you know, I'm, and, and already let them start chipping you away on the phone before the appointment's happened. You haven't provided any value yet. In the absence of value, what matters? Price. In the absence of value, the only thing that matters is price. Any questions so far, guys? I'm all going quick because it's a lot of material. All right, Gary Keller. So this is one of the exercises that they would have had you do in the longer version of this. We give you about 10 minutes to role play with a partner and take turns practicing uh, using the pre-listing lead sheet and all that kind of stuff. Questions to ask. There are a couple of really good um, pre-listing questionnaires in that um, in the book. Go to KWU under Win the Sellers, and it's all in there, and it's all free. Okay. All right. Now we're into cultivating. Oops. So, in the cultivate system, what we want to be able to do is to communicate with somebody on a regular basis with pieces of value. Okay? What has value to your people? To a lead. Pre-home evaluation. Uh, home evaluation. What else? What, what sales on our neighborhood? What what neighborhood sales. Doing? Right. Well, what you're providing them. What you're providing them. Great. How much you charge them? That's not a piece of value. No? No. The plan for selling the property? The marketing plan especially? Could be. Mm -hmm. Could be. That's not, that's not value to them until they're ready, willing, and able, is it? Let me ask you something. How does a person choose a realtor? How do you think? Their ads. <laughs> their ad? You think they choose it because of their ads? Well, no. It's more ability, connection, like, yeah. you know, is it someone that you want to work with, like, 
Mm -hmm. To get there. I, I'll, I would submit to you this. Everybody works with a real estate agent that they know, mm -hmm. that they like, mm -hmm. trust. and they trust. They don't like trust. They don't like trust. And so they already know you. They know who you are. They need to like you. So what's a big thing of value whether you can get them to like them? If you wish them a happy holidays. Mm -hmm. You want to turn that up to a 10? If you know what, if there are, um, they celebrate Eid. They say, oh, what's the, the um, Hanukkah. Or the Hanukkah. There's, there, there's a, I was trying to think of the, 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 the um, Diwali. The Diwali, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Sugar. Really working at this. <laughs> Slip my mind. I got a whole market center of of, uh, of Sikh realtors in Surrey, DC, and there's 140 of them, and they do big things around the yeah, world. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, but you know, wishing them a happy holidays, regardless of their holiday. Clients, <laughs> right? No like and trust. It's value. Yeah. Okay. What was that? Client events. Trust comes when you show trust in your professional ability, right? Mm -hmm. So homes you sold in another neighborhood, case studies, stories about your your about your profession, and the stories can be as simple as this: my first listing or my first buyer ever. We went to see a bunch of homes on a Wednesday night in Hamilton. So in Lower Hamilton, it's a lot of houses built in the 1930s and 40s, fieldstone basements. Looks a little bit like a Blair, like the Blair Witch Project, if you know what that movie is. We walked into the basement of, of one of these listings, and on the wall, first of all, there was a market lounger, a shag green carpet, and a poster about how to disembowel a human. Oh, my goodness. They ran staging matters, guys. <laughs> now, do you see your reaction for this? I've told this story a hundred times in the in the cult of A hundred times. People laugh. But it gets two messages across. One, I'm a fun guy. Yeah. Two, staging matters. Mm -hmm. So we stage houses. We don't let people, I still have the picture. If you want it afterwards, I have the picture. My wife and I found it. Uh, we were going through old pictures on the weekend. And I'm like, oh, there it is. Yeah. So how to draw a quarter of human. Um, it's creepy. It's super creepy. Went to a dollhouse, too. Big one. 6,000 square feet. Had to be 400 dolls. Oh, my God. And like the kind of dolls with the eyes like. Oh, yeah. oh God. <laughs> it's right up there with fear clowns. So that's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to be communicating with them on a regular basis. 36, no, oh, sorry, uh, 33 times a year. So about once every two weeks or 10 days. Two weeks, 10 days. Okay? To keep yourself top of mind and know that you like them. Four phone calls. Hey, how are you? How's the dog? How's your job? You know, sphere of influence calls. A couple of events and your newsletters. Right? Can I add something? Fire. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like attract like. So if I'm a wealthy person, I like to talk to a person who is financially successful. If I'm an average Joe, I like to touch with the average Joe. So you choose who you are and who you want to attract. Absolutely. More importantly, homeowners know other homeowners. That's true. In my friend group, I went to University of those people, I've known them all for 30 years. They're all in different walks of life, teachers, uh, UI designers, all that kind of stuff. The only thing they have in common is they all, we all have kids, we're all at the same stage in our lives, we're all moving up in homes, and we all own homes. Mm -hmm. You will always know people that like you. Uh -huh. So we're into the pre-listing side. Pre-listing package, process, and buy-in. If you have a powerful pre-listing package, its main job is to cover the dirty work, all the things people might object to, and all the things that people need to know about. Gene Rivers, the man, the myth, the legend.
How many of you use a pre-listing package? Awesome. Normally I ask that question and I get like starry and I just like... <laughs> What's in a pre-listing package? Whoops. So what goes into a pre-listing package? Explaining the process of selling the home from A to Z. Mm -hmm. Um, about KW, uh, well, you know. Yep. There's all kinds of pre-listing packages on KW Connect. But what I would have in a pre-listing package is this. Your resume. A cover letter in your resume. If nothing else, what you were doing today is you were applying for a job. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're applying for a job. I promise you, if there's two people that are showing up to something, and one has told a person that they were the head of marketing from Wilson, and the other person has told them that they had not done that, I guarantee you I've got a leg up. If you have any sort of sold guarantee, you've seen, you know, I'll sell your home or I'll buy it, or sell your home in 30 days or we'll do it for free. If you choose to do any of those kind of things, that needs to be in there. Your marketing plan. The marketing plan, it is important to start with why and why each step is important. Okay? Each of you have your own marketing plans. That's a little bit beyond the scope of this. Um, but the mark having the marketing plan in there. Okay? That needs to be on a person's doorstep at least 48 hours before your appointment. If you're coming over on Thursday and you drop it off to me on a Wednesday night, I promise you my kids got dance, I got baseball, I'm going to the gym at 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm working all day, I will not have read it by the time you get there. I won't have. At least 48 hours. Okay? This process would tell you there should be a price, your, your pricing in that pre-listing package. I would not do that. Because you've not seen the home yet. Okay? There's nothing worse than a person telling somebody what to do without all the information. People feel like they're being spoken down to. And it sucks. If you don't like being spoken down to, neither do I. I want a person to have all the information. Your value proposition. So your VP speaks to things you do for your seller that satisfy their needs, add value to their lives, and adds value to the transaction. Okay? You need to think about this, what it is for you. Okay? Value propositions in real estate are tough because essentially we do the same job. Now there's variations to who do the same job. And I, have, I tell people that it is akin to this. A captain of a ship is sailing across the Atlantic from England to the United States. In easy seas, they all get there at the same time. But when the seas aren't so easy, some get there and some don't. And the skill of that captain to navigate the sea as it stands is the value that person brings to that job. Your realtor is the same. In easy times, they all get you to the finish line. Some better than others. But in tough times, you want a good one because otherwise your ship is sinking. Is that fair? That's a great analogy. Thank you. Can I steal it? Sure. Thank you. I don't know, I just, you need to put a little asterisk that says red to by Indies. That's yes. fine. Okay. I'll do that. So what adds value? What marketing do you do that adds value? What exposure do you do that adds value? Do you have some massive Instagram following that you can talk about? If any of you have ever heard of Stevie Susie from up in the New Market office, she's a TikTok following of 120,000 people. It's a lot, mm -hmm. right? Your unique selling proposition. 
is what features and benefits you bring to the table that set you apart from your competition. Your professional and personal background, education, special interests, talents, skills, and where you developed in the real estate. And why? What problem are you solving with each of the things that you bring in your unique sound proposition? Take action. The major point is the ahas, one thing. So any questions around that so far? Any ahas that you've heard? I definitely have the ahas with the, the ship analysis. Mm -hmm. um, and as that, um, you know, a lot of times we underestimate ourselves. Um, I've, uh, I started in real estate with a really, really tough situation um, before I got my license. And I never mentioned it anymore. That's my aha moment that I need to actually put that in my resume as you said. Yeah. I put my resume in there and I say when I get to every listing appointment, listen, this whole journey is about you. But my resume and everything is in here because you deserve to know who it is, who's the person that you're hiring to get you to that better place. How do you break into the area where there are few people that are really successful and they have dominated the area and their signs yes. are everywhere? Yeah. Door knocking. That's my neighborhood. Door knocking. I'm telling you. Does anyone know who Chris Knighton is? Chris Knighton's a big agent with us in Hamilton. He moved up from Houston, Texas. He's originally from Stony Creek, but he moved up. He moved into the Lake Point area in, in Lower Stony Creek. He decided he wanted to take over that area. The Mazda team had dominated 90% of the listings, and he took it over in a year. Oh, wow. Huh. Door One guy door knocking. Mark Johnson is Hamilton, right? Mike Johnson is Hamilton. He charged 6% as a commission. He oh, had yeah, all the time. 4%. All the time. How like do you Johnson. work in Hamilton? Sorry? How do you work in Hamilton? I don't like that house. It's like all their part. Do Most like, part, that's Do you like money? <laughs> yeah. Good question. Because I don't care. That's not my job to pick somebody's house for My job is to either sell it or protect them on the buy side. That's my job. I don't care what the houses look like. So what's the secret with 6% commission? Secret? You? Secret uh, with 6% commission. Talk to Mike. He'll let you know. He'll tell you all about it. I go to the gym with Mike Johnson every day. Oh, like, he's a great guy. He's super easy to talk to. Just ask him. Yeah, Mike's a great dude. All right, listing consultation. Da -da. The five strategies for a great listing consultation. Know your scripts and materials. This conversation should be the same every single time you have it, okay? That doesn't mean you have to go and get a script off the internet and read it verbatim. That is not what that means. What it does mean is that if you go to person A and you start your spiel about listing the house, that should be the same for person B and the same for person C. And the reason is, is because if you say different stuff all the time, you never know what works. You never know. And so if you want to build your business on a model, start with the scripts from Kept from KWU. The script the scripts from Bold. Start with those. And build on that. But make it the same every time. Understand your market. There is nothing worse than going into somebody's house presenting a CMA and having them say, my neighbor sold three, three weeks ago, that's just at the sign down. It's not in here. There's nothing worse, <laughs> okay? So know the market. You're gonna bring, you're gonna bring as a CMA, and then you're gonna need to know everything else too. That's a job, okay? Use communication techniques that build rapport. D I S C S uh, S C. Either way. You come to my house, and it looks like we just cleaned up because you were coming over, and that's because that's what's happened. Like that's the thing. And the reason it's like that is because the D's and the I's, and we're doing a whole bunch of stuff in our minds. Look at everything's crazy. 
The C's and the S's, those people's houses are clean every day, all the time. All the time. CNS. Hmm? CNS. CNS. I know, I wrote it backwards and now I keep saying SC, but yes. You know? If somebody just wants to get, well, just wants to get the point, they're a D. Direct. direct. Be direct with them. Okay? Shorten down what you're doing. They want you out of there in 15 minutes. Eyes, they want to keep you there all night. Okay? They want to laugh, they want a great time. Right? It's all about how you're going to feel. So build rapport. If you use the word, how would you feel about that with an eye? They're like, Right? Whereas if you ask me how do you feel about that, I'm like, I don't feel anything about it. Like, just we, we need to go here, you hear your thing, we're using to do this paperwork. C's, they're gonna want to know every whether or not the tile was changed in the house down the street. They want details. They want you to go through your comps line by line to make them feel secure. S they're going to be reserved. They're not going to tell you a lot. They're the ones that are like, I can't tell you about my financial situation. Because mm -hmm. I don't want you to know. Okay? These two people can never be wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've met people like that in your life before, but these two people can never be wrong. If you make them wrong, you'll lose. Okay? You must show them and allow them to come to their own conclusions. Okay? Be a consultant, not just a sales representative. If you ever walked into a house on a CMA for a person told them not to sell. And told them not to sell. Don't sell. I have. Twice this year. Walked into a person's house, they're getting divorced. They bought for six hundred and forty thousand. Their house was worth about six hundred and forty thousand now, three three years later. They had a great mortgage currently. They were going to have to both rent, which means that their out of pocket costs for the rents would have been higher each than what they were paying for the building. And I said, Carrie, I love you. Don't sell. Someone needs to keep this house. It's going to cost you more money to move. I know you hate each other. That's okay. But keep the asset. They did. That's what being a consultant is as opposed to a salesperson. Being a consultant is, she's already sent me three referrals since then. Um, but doing the right thing all the time is what consultants do. Build an appointment toolkit. This is what you're bringing to every single appointment all the time. Okay? What, do you think, what things do you think you should be in your toolkit? Laptop. Laptop. Absolutely. What tabs should be open on your laptop? MLS. What else? The listings, the comps. Listings, comps. What else? CMA, presentation. CMA, presentation. What else? We'll just say presentation. Right? Just presentation, yep. Yeah. Which includes a resume and uh, marketing ideas and whatnot. May I tell you what I bring? Mm -hmm. I bring it in that bag. I have my cell phone open to a calculator. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is a hot spot for my computer, so I do not have to connect to their internet. Mm -hmm. It's already open. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I have this with me. I have this with me so that I have every piece of information they can ever ask for mm -hmm. on, on there. I bring a tape measure. It's in the back, in case we have to figure something out. I bring a wire tester. I do you all those homes you don't like in Hamilton? Those old homes? They got some crazy stuff in the basement. And so when I go down there, and I see knob and two, I want to test it to see if it's live, so that I know. Because I'm liable for everything that I, that I, that I could know or ought to know. I have a moisture meter. I can stick in the wall and I can find out, you know, is this wall wet? It's maybe 
maybe cost me 65 bucks at Home Depot for everything, mm -hmm. learn how to use it. It's not something that happens in place of an inspection. What is everything that you check? The, the so you go downstairs, you go to the basement of an old house, right? Yeah, there would know what knob and tube wiring looks like. You, so a lot of times they just left the tube and wiring in the, yeah. in the ceiling yeah. and it's not live anymore. So you take a wire tester and see if there's electricity in it. If there is, that's going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. Right? It's going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you go to, um, you see a water spot in a basement wall or a ceiling or anything like that, and you just like, the seller always says, oh, that's years ago. <laughs> we fixed that. <laughs> fixed professionally. Take a, take a moisture reader up to it. It's going to tell you whether or not it's wet. Um, It'll read up to 50% moisture. 100% moisture would be putting in water. Right? So you have these things. And so at bare minimum, you don't have to make the person wrong and say, I appreciate you got it fixed. You need to have that person come back because it's still Right? Isn't it an easy way to figure out if there is mold in the house? Is there an easy way to figure out what well, mold has? Other than the calling for the companies who do. Um, how do you like? How how good are you in attics? Attics. So mold can grow anywhere at home. Anywhere. Yeah. Um, every home has a little bit of it, and so you just need to know where to look so that you can see it. Yeah, no, but sometimes I have noticed the basements. Uh, they have changed the drywalls. Like it has a good drywall, but. It's suspicious, like you could tell there was maybe water in the basement and they just try to cover it. That doesn't show so much, doesn't show anything. If it doesn't show anything and they're telling you it's not there, there's no way aside from tearing that drywall off to know if there's anything behind it. There's no way of knowing. They're going to lie. If that's what they're doing, and I'm not saying that it is because yeah. a lot of times it has nothing to do with anything. But um, it's a very that that's a hard thing to 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 do. Um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Okay. So that's your appointment toolkit. Okay. You want to have everything that you're going to need. At no point you're going to want somebody to ask you a question. You're like, ah, forgot my phone. Have the toolkit. Have a checklist for it. Make sure you're ready to rock and roll. All right. The consultation. Confirm the appointment. Okay. Steps to match the consultation. Confirm the appointment. What does that look like? After you've dropped off the pre-listing presentation, you call that client. You say, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. My name is Ian Davies from, from Keller Williams. We have an appointment tomorrow at 7 o'clock. I just want to make sure that that's still good for you. Fantastic. I have a couple of quick questions before I come out. If I come out on, on Thursday, we talk about your home, we come to, to terms on a price, um, do you think you'll want me to get the process started that night? Why am I asking that? You say, how ready they are? What do you think they're going to say? Yeah. Well, well they're going to say, uh, interviewing other agents. Maybe. They're interviewing other agents. Mm -hmm. Maybe? Okay, tell me about that. If I get the price I want and the commission is what I think, yeah, maybe. So if, if we can come to terms on price mm -hmm. and commission, yeah. would you be willing to get the process started? Well, I have to ask my grandma. You have to ask your grandma? Yeah. Is she not going to be there if she's a decision maker? Uh, no. No? No. I mean, here's the truth then. We should probably reschedule. Mm -hmm. We're going to go over a lot of different things. And I don't want your grandmother, I want to make sure that I can answer all of your grandmother's questions so I like her there. Okay. Right? Because here's the trick. If you go in for a listing presentation and no one signs paperwork and you leave, the chances of you getting that listing went down by three quarters. Really? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. If I call somebody, and they say, yeah, we just had so-and-so in to sell our house. Have you just signed anything with them? No. Nope. And they say, no. And I'm like, you know what? Great, guys. Let's get you a second opinion. And then I go in and sign them. I do it all the time. <laughs> all the time. Right? So if they're not ready to go, if you say that, they're going to give you all their objections. 
I want my list price and my and, and my cost. I have to talk to their grand to my grandmother. The tooth fairy might come on Thursday. I don't know. Whatever they're gonna say, right? But they're gonna give you all their objections right there. The things that are important to them. So that you, when you get into the, the, the listing presentation, you say, now we're going to talk about the comparables and the price, and the price we'd like to set for your home. I know that's really important to you. And so I want to make sure we get this. We were really thorough here. Okay? Adopt a yes mindset. Okay? This, this listing is mine. Should I desire it? Who? Huh. You all taking bold? Yeah, yes, yeah. We have. Have you? I like have. this? Yeah, yeah. You've taken bold? You've taken bold? No, I haven't. Oh, you haven't bold. So one person's seen bold? <laughs> so what I'm understanding is, of the five of you, only one has ever been in bold? <laughs> Boy, I hope Teresa doesn't hear this. <laughs> so... You want to adopt the yes mindset. You're going there to sign listing. They want to sign with you. That's why you're there. Okay? You've done everything right. It's you, this listing is yours if you want it. Full stop. Adopt a yes mindset. Enter and tour. How you doing, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? My name is Ian Davies. Thank you so much for having me over here. I know we were supposed to be here a little bit five minutes early for our 8 o'clock meeting. Tell you what, how about I just toss my stuff out the kitchen table and you can show me around the house? Awesome. That's the loudest ringer I've heard in class in a while. You want to make sure you've got a pen and a piece of paper when you walk around. Okay? As you walk around, you're making notes about the house. That's important. Make notes about the house. But the only way to handle the objection is through the meeting, not the phone conversation or. No! No, never. You haven't provided any value yet. They don't know what you're going to do. You could be any Joe Schmuck off the street. You're a Keller Williams agent. You're the best trained from one of the best trained brokerages in Toronto. But they have no idea until you tell until you have informed them of that value. No idea. You could be me. They know. They don't know. It's a tour of the house. Ask questions, take notes. Okay? It's important. Begin the conversation and uncover, prioritize their needs. Okay? These two things are very important. When you begin the conversation, we're talking about your home, we're talking about what we do to get at your home sold. Just so I'm clear, what's important to you about this? Why are you moving? Where are you going? What are the parts about this sale that are most important to you that aren't the price? Right? We need to be in the next house so my kid can start school in the new school earlier. That conversation is happening right now with people. They're behind, they're saying, we gotta be in my civic holiday weekend because if we're out of the civic holiday weekend, my kid won't start in the same school. Happens all the time. What's well, important? It's important to them. And they're gonna tell you things, and you're gonna say, "What else?" They're gonna tell you things. And you're gonna say, "What else is important?" They're gonna tell you things, and you say, "What else is important?" You're gonna write it all down because it's important to you too. And you're gonna let them talk until they're done talking. And you're gonna move forward. You're gonna go through all of your value while checking for commitment. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when we come out, we bring the, 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 uh, the photography crew and the videos and all that kind of stuff. Do you think this is something that can help you get your own sold? Yes. Great. I'm not asking for contracts. I'm just asking if what I'm saying is going to help. Awesome. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when we start doing paid advertising for your home, it's going to go to about 100,000 people in the first 14 days. Does that sound like something that can help you can help your home stand out beyond what happens on Realtor.ca? Yes. 
I get to the, I do what Ben Kinney does at the very end. Let me ask you about Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Is there anything that I haven't said or may have forgotten that another agent has ever told you? No. Great. Here's what happens next. We need to sign the paperwork. Practice that with me. Great. Here's what happens next. Great. Here's what happens next. And you say it slowly. Okay? And that transitions you into the next piece. The next piece is getting paperwork signed. Okay? Your paperwork should have the list price that you want. All right, you're going to write it in right there. Slide over. It's the only thing I get signed on hard copy of the listing agreement right now. Everything else gets signed digitally. The listing agreements are always in hard copy. You're going to get objections. And because you asked the right question in your pre-listing call, you're going to know what those are. And what are they going to be? Like, um, commissions. I've got to ask my grandma. You didn't go if the grandma wasn't there then. <laughs> oh, I don't like how much this is going to cost. You know what? That's fantastic. I really appreciate that. How much money you put in your pocket is a very important thing here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something. If, I can, if I'm going to do all of the work to give you the highest price absolutely possible, is it not fair for me to charge for that? Not really, not that much. Not that much? You're making more than I... Then you don't have to have my services. And you can deal with whomever you like. 50000 is a lot of money. Absolutely. You're going to make way more than that. But 50000 is a lot of money. I don't negotiate. I am a 6% realtor. 6%? 100%. Yeah. All yeah. the time. No, no, I don't cut deals for anyone that doesn't have my last name. So like yesterday I saw driving on Eglinton, I saw this sign, big sign. Yep. Uh, full service, MLS, everything, one person. Uh, is that legal? Sure, of course it is. Goes on MLS for one percent, totally. Even they charge a thousand dollars to put your listing out. Some people do. don't worry about that. Ignore. Yeah. Ignore all yeah. of that. Five hundred. I've, I've seen it. Sure. Yeah. Five hundred bucks up front. Yeah. We'll put an MLS for you. Fantastic. Yeah. But they don't do anything. I've dealt with. Yeah. Someone. No, that's just MLS. I understand. But when this, when the guy says full service with experience and all that. You know? Sure. What does full service mean? Put it on the MLS. <laughs> and it's sell sign in front of the door. That's it. Yeah, but so what does? There you go. Remember, you've gone through your whole marketing plan, and your whole marketing plan has more than sign in long put on MLS. Mm -hmm. And it has reasons why you do each of the steps. Right. I'll give you mine for, vid for a video. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, each one of my listings can, gets an HGTV quality video done for every single listing. Would you like to know why? Because we know right now in the city of Toronto there's 45,000 listings. In your category there's 3,000 listings. And we need you to be the cream that rises to the top in a competitive market. Is that fair? With those videos we can then pay for advertising on multiple platforms that drive traffic to your home rather than waiting <coughs> for somebody to find it in a search engine. Would that be something you think would help you get your home sold? Absolutely. Great. We actually shoot a bunch of different types of video for your home. Not only do we shoot a landmark that you see on your television, we also shoot this way. So we can put it on TikTok, Snapchat, and Instagram, and all the things that the kids love to play with today. Let me ask you something, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Do you think in India, they know that Realtor.ca is a thing. They can find houses on Realtor.ca. No. I promise you they don't because they don't have centralized centralized MLS the way they do. Most countries don't. It's just us in the U.S. 
So if any immigrants that are coming to Toronto, and they're coming and they're moving here with money and they need to buy, and they're looking for a home, where do you think they find it? Social media and advertising that I pay for. What we know right now is we're having record, uh, record immigration from all countries, whether it be Ukraine, India, China, Brazil, we're bringing in people from all sorts of places to fill positions that we can't fill. They need places to live. And so for us to access that part of the market, we need to do what? Advertise. Advertise there. I knew I liked you. <laughs> so let me ask you something. Now that I've said that, do you think a full service for 500 bucks is doing that? I promise you no one's making any money because I know what it costs me to do it. Right? That's the difference. When you provide the value with a why, no one's saying, you know, this is the same job somebody else did. That doesn't happen. Set expectations. Okay? The city, the tramp got the greatest gift ever a couple years ago. And that's when everybody in Treb moved to Broker Bay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does everyone know how to use Broker Bay Analytics? Mm -hmm. You can show a person from Broker Bay Analytics mm -hmm. how fast a home has sold on average, how many showings they get per offer that gets registered, how many offers they have to get registered before they get a sale. How much more powerful is that when I say, Mr. Mrs. Seller, here's what's happening in the city of Toronto right now. The average, um, the average number, of list, the number of listings is this. This is how many showings they've got in the last seven days. It's like 0.5 is showing per, per listing. And we know that this is the number of offers that are registered through the system. So we know that for every one offer, we need to get at least 12 showings. Okay. And for each one of the 12 showings, we need X number, of, X number of days. And for each one of the offers to get an actual sale, we need 2.5. Because the first one is going to be too low. Or we're not going to be able to bring it together. Where does that lead your expectations? One, you're a what? You are a G as far as the, the, the market is concerned. No one else has told them that, ever. And they can see it. They can see it and not have to feel frustrated in themselves. Mm -hmm. If you need to go, that's okay. So I stand. stand. I totally get it. I walk through this whole thing because sitting down would drive me nuts. Okay. Negotiate and resolve the issues. Okay. If somebody wants to raise the price of their house five thousand dollars in the city of Toronto, just do it. Just give them the five thousand dollars price. I promise you, the prices are so high. You didn't make a five thousand dollar error. There's no such thing. The errors in Toronto are going to be fifty to a hundred thousand dollar price errors. Okay. So if it's if it's five grand, you know what? If that makes you feel better, we'll do it. It's not going to make that much of a difference. Okay. But don't in this market take over price listings. They will not sell. Okay. You, I would much rather you get back on the phone and find another person to sell to, to list for than take a listing that's two hundred thousand dollars overpriced. Because I promise you, the stress of saying we don't need to work together is nowhere close to the stress of being called three times a week, every week, wondering whether houses didn't sell and that you're such a terrible person. Okay. And then close. Great, here's what happens next. I need you to sign here where I've highlighted. Okay? What do we say? Here's great. what happens next. next. I love it. If you ever want a great book, exactly what to say for real estate agents. It's a paperback book that costs $9 on Amazon. Fantastic. Exactly what to say for real estate agents. The consultation follow-up. Okay? So what was the name of the book? Exactly what to say oh, for real estate agents. Mm -hmm. You won. Thank you and start servicing. If you didn't win, you'll win the next one. 
and where they defer or postpone the listing, deciding on, the on when to follow up. Okay, those are the things that happen after consultation. You either you won, ha <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, you'll win the next one. They threw you out of the house. Easy come, easy go. Go on, move on to the next one. Show up tomorrow. The best realtors have one thing in common. That's a short memory. Okay. Defer or postpone the listing. Sometimes you're going to get out there and they're going to be like, well, my kid finishes school in eight months, so I can't list until then. That's going to happen. They didn't tell you. You didn't tease it out of them. It's going to happen. No problem. Back at the cultivator. One. Cool? Okay, any, any ahas? Things you'd like to do? We'll run out of time. <laughs> this is so much stuff to do in that. It's so much. Marketing, purpose, value, position, fiduciary. Service standards. Standards are, your, standards are yardsticks to your performance. They measure how well you're performing. Activity, what are your service standards and how are you accountable to them? So, you need to figure out for yourself in your process what this looks like going forward for you. In my listing presentation, I promise them a couple of things. I will call you every Wednesday after 1 o'clock. I call all of my listings after, on Wednesdays after 1. Okay? Is that okay with you? Would you like more calls or fewer calls? Just text. Just text? Are you sure? There's a part thing about text where nuance and things like that doesn't get covered. And this is a very important thing for you. Uh, in the sale of your home. We have a million dollars on the line. I'd much sooner speak to you voice to voice. Is that okay? Okay. There are lots of people that are like, you need to do what they want to do. No. No. This is not you guys, you know, arranging a date to meet to go play billiards somewhere. That you can do by text. A million dollar deal on what is almost all this person's money in life? No. We talk to them live. Okay? Sorry, I know I got a little serious about that. <laughs> Tries me nuts. I've had so many clients like, oh, you can just text me. I'm like, I'm not texting you. Mm -hmm. What am I going to say? You lost this deal that potentially means you want to lose your house. Like, I'm not having that conversation. You <laughs> text. Mm -hmm. Okay? I call once a week. I update them with marketing on Mondays. So all the marketing goes out, how many viewings they had, how, what the comments were back, what they had what they can do, what we can change, what our next steps are, all comes in an email every Monday. Okay? So what happened? What does it mean? And what will we do next? Those are the three things you're going to answer in that email. Okay? Do you also, sorry, do you also uh, price the houses a few hundred thousand under the market value? Never. Never. So you first thing on the market this value? What, on market value on market value. I, in this market, I use a, a system called seam pricing. Holy moly, everybody. Seam pricing. Seam pricing is this. I'm going to look at where everything is currently listed and where everything in that category has sold, and I'm going to price it in the middle. Well, that's what I like. There's people here, everybody puts it on the price, and yeah. they wait for two days to get... 20 offers and whoever pays more. Well, that's not happening right now. Though. It's, it can happen in some markets. Yeah, it does. It, different pricing strategies work in different markets, yeah. right? So in Hamilton, when we were the, in like 30, 40, 50 offers, I would price where we believed that the problem was going to sell and hold off offers. And I got some enormous prices. Um, but I would have to say to clients of mine, listen, so the information tells us that this house should sell here, and then we'd end up like here. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way of the world. Um, that said, in a market like this, where you're not always going to be in competition, even if you move something way, way down to make it low, the competition may not bring you back up to where you're supposed to be. Yeah. So I want, it to, I want it to be in line with what our competition looks like, market the hell out of it, and, dr and drive traffic that way. Yeah. That's how I would do it. 
So you want to work out your communication strategy and what you're going to do, and you want to implement all of your marketing tactics. So if you're doing video, if you're doing pictures, if you're doing advertising online, if you're doing flyering of that neighborhood, if you're doing an every other week open house, if you're doing an agent's open, all those kinds of things, they all have to be in your standard list of things that you're going to do, and you must do them all. Because if you don't do the things you say you're going to do, you're going to have, it, I hope it was a wonderful short stay in this industry. Right? That's the plague of humanity, is people not doing what they say they're going to do. Team service. Highly productive listing leads represent develop, document, train teams to maintain the highest possible standards of service. One of the reasons you want to document your standards of service are going to be is because eventually you're going to have an assistant and another agent and all that kind of stuff and they need to understand it too. And if it's all tribal knowledge, it's all in your head and you speak it, you're going to forget stuff. The game telephone is the game telephone for a reason. You know, if you want something done the same, same way every time, you document it and have somebody learn to document. Marketing, marketing message, methods, managing marketing budgets, staging and pricing. Okay. So, full service does not do staging. For 500 bucks, you don't do staging. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to decide whether or not you want to pay for staging or you want the client to pay for staging. I charge a lot. I pay for staging. You know, my six percent does not necessarily mean I make more money than anybody else. Mm -hmm. I drop a lot of cash to make sure your house is out there. Right? I bet. That's literally a bet that your house is going to sell. Okay. Your marketing plan. Your marketing plan ought to have a cadence of the things that you're going to do. It should have put up the sign. It should have send a photographer. It should have when you're going to list, what day of the week you list houses, all that kind of stuff. There's a hundred thousand of them out there. Go look them up. They're on KWU, you can Google them, all that kind of stuff. Marketing message and methods. Okay. Let's go back to our DIC. DICS. D's. Don't read descriptions. Don't worry about writing a description for a D. They're not going to read it. <laughs> Want to know how I know? Never read a description in my life. No idea. I going to read every word in the description, and they're going to go through every picture, and they're going to imagine themselves sitting by the fireplace or having a party or cooking in that kitchen, and they're going to do all those things. That's it, it's a very and it's a very like it's a it's awesome. So that's what you're doing your marketing for, mm -hmm. right? The C's, they want to know what the, the, the you know, mortgage calculator, what's the insurance going to be, you know, all that, when was the roof put on, that kind of thing. S, safe neighborhood. You know, is it going to be a secure home? Is it going to fall apart? No, to be secure. So when you're talking about your marketing and your message and your methods, you're looking at who you're, who you're attracting into that area and marketing directly to them, right? Do we know, for example, uh, certain um, certain types of people move to different places? If I told you who moves to Brampton right now, who would you say? Sikh Indian people. Yeah, I've been there for some They're naming streets after cricket players for good, for goodness' sake. Like it's a it's a fantastic community of these people, and so you need to be marketing into that, into that world, mm -hmm. into, into those places. You should get as good at your, your city. So in Hamilton, if I'm moving into Kirkendale, I know the vast majority of people that are moving into Kirkendale are coming from downtown Toronto, High Park, places like that. What is the area? In Hamilton? Kirkendale. Kirk? Kirkendale. Kirkendale. If you're moving up to where I live, in Upper Stony Creek, you're coming from Milton, North Mississauga, Brampton. I know you're coming from those places. Upper Stony Creek? And to, Upper, also, and, and to Upper Stony Creek, where it's all new. Oh, they are also yeah. Indians, right? They are. Mm -hmm. well, and, and a lot of, you know, um, Egyptians, Lebanese, yeah. uh, people that are coming in from the, from the city out to Stony Creek. Because most of the work with uh, the University. McMaster? McMaster, a lot of them, yeah. Some of them, yeah. Some of them. Will. But I know my areas and I know who's moving from them and where. 
I know that in, in 1960, if you were Portuguese and you were fleeing the, the totalitarian government in Portugal, you moved to Barton and Locke in Hamilton. It is an entire, uh, it's a four block radius of Portuguese people that all came from the same place. Mm -hmm. it, it's just the way it is. Um, I know what schools are good, what schools are closing. You know? There are schools closing? Oh yeah, all the time. The schools close all over Toronto all the time. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden there's people who live in a, in a they don't have kids anymore. Kids are gone, but they still own the house. You don't need the school. So go school closed and do something else, build a school. It happens all the time. But you need to know these things so that you know who you're marketing to. Mm -hmm. Manage your marketing budget. Okay. Here's how you figure out managing your marketing budget. Okay? Your, your market center can help you out with this. What percentage of homes sell this year? In previous years, it was close to 100. But right now, I'll bet you it's about 65 that actually sell and don't expire. Okay? So what you would do is do this. Let's say you list 10 homes this year, which means seven of them are going to sell. Six if you want to be conservative. Average commission for those is, let's say, $15,000. Add that all up. So it's the six that are going to sell for $15,000 that are actually going uh, to happen. That's $90,000, right? What can you reasonably spend on all 10 listings, right? Because you have to do it all for all of them. What can you reasonably spend on all 10 listings that aren't going to hurt your profit margins? on that 90,000, right? So if you spend $1,000 on each listing, that's gonna be $10,000 on the 10 listings, but you're only gonna make 90 because only six of them are gonna sell. It's $80,000 profit, as an example. You wanna know that for yourself, so that you're not gonna go out, take a multi-million dollar listing, because you know what expires first in bad markets? the most expensive listings. In my opinion, luxury is a shit market to be in. Because no one can afford it, and when things aren't good, there's nobody around to buy it. Whereas townhouses in Hamilton, everybody can buy one of those. Great. I think people who can't afford luxury, they don't care about the interest rates, because they mostly buy cash. 50-60% um, cash at least. That's probably not true. What's that? That's probably not true. Um, Very rarely. It's not really I don't know why a person would take a million dollars, two million dollars, and wrap it up in a house. Non-Canadians. Non-Canadians. They buy houses. Come cash. from a different uh, financial system. Yeah. They come here and they go look. I want to buy cash. Yeah. They buy uh, cash. If, if that that but that well rare. may be true, I've sold, sold a ton of luxury property. And I've never had it, not one time. No. Everyone gets a mortgage. Yeah. yeah. It's very rare. Not but to you put all your money in a thing that, with a sinking value? Yeah. Why? Why? Because they don't mm -hmm. like to have mortgage. They don't want to pay. Yes. I appreciate that. But if you buy something, if you buy something for two million dollars, and in six months it's worth one point eight million dollars, you bought the house, you paid cash, you didn't have any uh, interest payment. Great. But you lost two hundred thousand dollars. That's how that works. There's no reason to do it that way. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so staging and pricing, making sure your price is competitive. All right, I'm going to start burning through this, guys, because I've got um, just a little bit after this. Okay, three okay. minutes. Go. I'll tell you what we'll do. Yeah. If you're okay, I have a phone call at 2.30. Yes. If I can take that phone call, I can come back in and we finish up. Yes. Yeah, yes, sure. we can use okay. Let's take a break. Yes. Best practice, moments of truth, multiple offers. So, as the seller, one of the things you want to do is control your offers. Okay? And so, making sure offers come in at a consistent time, whether it's a busy um, a busy time or not a busy time doesn't really matter. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've all seen multiple offers with like offers around Tuesday and all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't accept an offer on a day that you don't work. Offers Monday to Friday before five. Mm 
Okay. Or maximum for eight. Yeah. A little, a little bit too late even. Yeah, so because so you're not getting an offer at eight o'clock, having to run from your family to go and present an offer to your client at nine o'clock at night on Tuesday. Okay? It's just an easy way to burn yourself out. Um, you want to make sure that when you're doing this, you are um, you're doing it in an organized fashion. So when you get the offer, you're going to highlight all the important stuff. Okay? Price, deposit, closing date, conditions, all that kind of stuff. Okay? You're going to want to know who the other realtor is. In Toronto, it's tough to know if you've ever dealt with that person before, but if you have, you know what kind of person they're going to be on the other side of this deal. Okay, so you want to know that as well. When you go and you, you present an offer, what I always do is take the top sheet off and say, okay, we're going to go through what the offer is, what they're asking for, chattels, all that kind of stuff. First, conditions and so on, and do the price last. Okay? To make sure we're all okay with this. And then we're going to talk about the price. And you can tell them the price up front. This one's for $900,000. we are going to talk about all these things, and then we're going to talk about the price. Uh, it's better to have a chart and put everything in a chart together. Sometimes you have a 20 offer or 15 offer. Yep. Absolutely. Create the chart. And so when you're in multiple offers, we got into this world where we started doing first, second, and third offers. Where people would come up. Um, that's not as much a right now thing. Um, but when you do do it, it's important to be fair to everyone. Um, in that process. We have, a, we have a duty of fair treatment as laid out by RICO. So if you give one person the ability to increase, you have to give them all the ability to increase. Okay? Low ball offers. You're going to get these on properties right now. Mm -hmm. You're going to list something for a million bucks and get 750. That's sorry. If you don't mind, I ask quickly. It's on the news, even if it was on the trap news, that June, what happened? Because too busy prices has gone up again? They got up a little bit, yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure I am mistaken. I think it was like 0.8%. It's so not a lot. It's not much change. No, and, and, and I mean, prices will go up and down as an average yes. over the year. Mm -hmm. You don't really look at that the same way. Like, it's not, we're going to be pretty flat. So right now, somebody says, how is the market what you say? I don't have a lot of business, so that's why. If somebody asks, how's the market? How is the market? What do you say? I said the market's good if you're looking if you're looking to sell, and it's better if you're looking to buy. The people who still are out there are still out there buying houses. Yes. There's still be forty or fifty thousand homes sold in Toronto this year. Um, it all depends. You know, the luxury market is pretty slow right now. Mm -hmm. The townhouse market, or the, like that under eight hundred thousand in Toronto, super, super fast. Yeah. We don't like, have under eight hundred. Do we have under eight hundred? You will. You'll find something somewhere. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like it's it's how's the market is a very big general question. Mm -hmm. And so for their house or for their friend's house or for like just the whole market in general, it's all very different. Very different. Yeah. yeah. Low ball offers. You present every offer. Um my practice for lowball offers, if, my, if they were just too far away, I never just say, we're not going to take it. I always sign back at full price if I have to, but I always sign back. And the reason is, is that a lowball offer is sometimes just a fishing lure to see where you come to. They want the house. So never, never throw away an opportunity, make the other side walk away. Okay. When you do the activity, there's a bunch of role play and scripts around negotiation in this. You guys know this though. Buyer makes an offer, seller responds yes. in one of three ways, accepts, rejects, or counters, and then it goes back around. Remember the KW adage, win, win, or no deal. You are not trying to gouge the other side as bad as possible. That's not the way this works. Every time I've ever seen litigation in, in real estate, it's quite clear that one side beat the shit out of the other side, and now somebody's unhappy about it. 
every time. So activity, negotiate this. We would be doing that if we were doing the full course. Make sure every contract contains two conditions. The circumstances under which the contract would become active or in effect. That's when they sign the acknowledgement. And what the buyer must do over the course of the specific contract period for the contract to remain valid. Conditions. Okay? We do a lot of, we have done a lot of no, no condition offers. You're going to see all that stuff coming back. So to start to know how you write your conditions, get with your yeah. broker of record, make sure the conditions that you're seeing are valid. Yeah. Okay? Try to remember the conditions. Because <laughs> a lot of the, a lot of what we're going to see right now is negotiation in the Appendix A, like in the yeah. Schedule A. So inspections, um, yeah. in, in condition of sale. Septic thing. Oh well, yeah. No, the Richmond here they have that. They have it everywhere that's not in the city. Yeah. And so it's I was raised in the country. I lived in a separate thing. Yeah. Well I used to work in Kings and I came to Toronto, so I yeah, know lots of that all there. was the yep. yeah. mm -hmm. cisterns, wells, yeah. all that. Half the agents here don't know what is it. No, and they sell condos. Yeah, I know. But uh, status certificates are gonna start to be a really big deal. Um, for condoms. For condoms. Yeah, that was the, what do you mean? And it, it's going to start to be bigger. So there's going to be police, places that don't have, they haven't raised their condo fee because the cost of ownership went yeah, up. That one. There's going to, they're going to get behind. Things aren't going to get fixed. What's, what's the best way to know if it, if it wasn't on the last minutes, like there is nobody to give you the report? I mean, there's no idea. Like, like the owner doesn't know what work is going to be done, but that there is the talk of changing the roof. It should it will all be in the, in the condo. If, if the they have accepted, but you know there is, okay, so there are buildings for you example. Can, you, can, you can request condo documents before sale. You can, as, a, as the listing agent, you can request the condo documents. I have questions. I think the, the smart listing agent, they have an inspection ready, a uh, status certificate ready, anybody to show the home, send it, uh, email them to them, email it to them. Yep. So instead of the, the other party put the condition for inspection or for a status certificate, okay, they can look at that, decide they can send the offer without condition or not. Yeah, now a status certificate is only good for 30 days. Right. Used to be 15. Mm -hmm. Could be 15. Be Could be 15. How about condition? Con the, the condition of inspection? Yes. An inspection is only as good as the as the other party trusts it. Because yeah. I promise you, my inspector goes through a house that I'm paying for the inspection on, he's saying whatever I want him to say. Mm -hmm. You can never trust the seller's inspection. I mean, it's risky. That's, I mean, it's, it's risky. Yeah. And if you're a good realtor and you know what you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Contract to close. You firmed on the deal. It's the time between you firmed on the deal and you're and you're about to um, and and you're about to close in. Okay. The first thing we don't clear title in Canada. Um, the first thing that you are going to do is once the deal firms, you're going to ask for a referral. No client is happier with you than that moment. <laughs> Ask for the referral. Don't waste it. You get your inspections done, get the loan underwritten, days of completion. This is all stuff that's done by the buyer side. Um, recordations of processing. That's I mean, two hours, nine months in there. Okay. Keep track of the transaction. So figuring out what happens and when. Having checklists for all these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some people need two visits before closing. Yeah, I've never seen that. Sorry? Some people need two visits before closing the house. Yep, visit, visits before closing, um, different kinds of inspection required before closing, pool closings, all that kind of stuff. Agents have two agendas. One, to move the current transaction toward a successful closing, and two, to ensure referrals. Most agents don't get that. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like to wow a person in that time frame? between when they firm in the deal and they close. Ask for referral, uh, ask for Google review, writing. Sure, that's <laughs> yeah. Yes. But what I'm just thought of the old people. Who what earns you that though? Referral? What earns you the referral? 
the, the good job. So once the once the the the, the thing is firm, mm -hmm. and your job is essentially done. Right there and there. Do you call them again? Do you ask how they're doing? Do you ask how moving is going? Do you ask how do you need help moving your utilities? Do you ask, would you like a moving company? Would you like to know yes, if we are busy, no, we just forget. Well, if you just forget, then you miss your what? Yeah, but oh, I have done golden that. Golden opportunity. I have done that. They're never happier than they are with you right now. So if you pour it on now, that's when they I saw the 92-year-old woman's house who had no family other than one brother who was very happy with his wife. And I thought, okay, she has nobody, 92 year old. I sold her house and forgot about her. I didn't forget, I didn't call. After four years, I just called her, how are you doing in the senior's home, you know? Uh, and uh, she said, well, I'm very happy now that my brother is here. I said, your brother here? Yeah, he sold his house and, you know, his wife died and he sold his house and he came. Like, I thought there is no business from this woman ever because she had, she's from the war times from yep. wherever, Ukraine. She won't have any referral for me. She was always alone. And Everybody does. And Everybody knows she somebody. Was very, very good. And so the, the, the trick here is, is that in your service standard, after you've, you've firmed on a house, there are things that you're going to want to do between now and when a person closes. Mm -hmm. You want to check in. You're going to want to buy a closing gift. You're going to want to do all those kinds of things. Right. Um, offering the help for moving, those the stuff. Yep, referrals to moving, company. referral to moving companies. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, you'll, you'll probably have moving companies here that are key partners for the, for the brokerage. You can find all that stuff. But you want to do those things because otherwise, your that person's going to think all I was to them was a transaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Play the numbers game. Contract to close. Major points, one thing. Post close cycle. This is your nurture cycle. This is when you're maintaining the no like and trust from before. Avoid pitfalls. Drop in contacts with clients after closing. Leaving all rapport and equity on the table instead of getting numerous deals from them. Right? One of the reasons that I was able to sell so much real estate in so little time is because I got everything as a referral. Mm -hmm. I never had to go look for one piece of business. And that's it. And, uh, Surveys, one. testimonials, all of the contacts. This is always interesting. Mm -hmm. The top one was would you recommend your listing agent again? 78% said definitely. <laughs> How many times a seller recommend, recommended the agent? Under 40. You wonder why that is? They sell and they walk away. They, they, they just walk away and never talk to them again. Yeah. Okay? In touch ideas. Item. How it's being delivered. Frequency. This is your 33 touch to keep, to keep with them. Conclusion. So that's the system. Okay? That's what you're going to want to do consistently over time to build your business on listings. Listings, I promise you, will be your bread and butter. Once, you're, once you've been doing this for a while, you'll never want to go buy ever again. I hate them. I don't do very many questions. Have people that I refer the buyers to <laughs> um, because I just don't get some business from this area and refer it to me. I'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. It's may, it may and I'll give you fifty percent. Well, that sounds lovely, and I don't have very many people in, in Toronto. I don't come across the bridge very often, um, but it's it's a real thing to be able to build your business on a specific system that works over and over and over again <coughs> to continuously build your business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But it's about getting into action. Yeah.